Okay, this is this is what I'm talking about. Here's here's the uh, here's the model that I created from your sketch data. Um, first, I just started with your sketch and created an extrude that goes to whatever height you had it. Now you were later trying to create this separately. But this function, doing it this way, it just makes everything all at once. And so it's a lot easier, but this way you've got a big block of material and you need to shell it out. So I shelled it out. Um, here's how you'd use the shell. The shell is right up here. Um, you tell it whatever wall thickness you want it to be. So that's the thickness of the bottom and the sides. If you have things that are different thicknesses than your main thickness, you can set that up down here where you select a different wall and make it a different thickness. But just as a hint, you can't have different thicknesses that are connected by a tangency. <laughs> okay, So if, if one of these faces was going to be a, a different thickness from the rest, then you'd have to select all three of these faces. Well, anyway, that's uh, that's something else. But uh, I've selected here in this top list, the light blue list, all of the faces that I want to remove. So it's going to allow the gray faces to remain the blue faces are going to be removed and uh, and shell out the part. So that's that's really all there is to it. And it's it's pretty easy and straightforward and it gets you where you're trying to go a lot more cleanly. Then I use the groove function. Now the groove function is a little bit of an advanced feature, but I mean it's not hard to use. You can find it uh, under, uh, find it here, fastening feature, lip slash groove. It's intended to be for plastics, but anyway. So uh, the groove needs several different kinds of information. The first thing it needs is what body are you trying to put a groove on? And usually this will put a groove on one body and the lip on the other. So you have to decide what you're doing. In this case, you only have one body. So just click on that. And then here, this is looking for something that, that shows the direction of the lip or groove. And so I use this vertical edge down on the end. There are a lot of other things that you could have used that just show that you want straight up, you want the, the lip or groove to go straight up. Okay, so now the face that's going to uh, get the groove put on it is this top face that's outlined here. And so I selected that in that box. And then down here, I just selected where I wanted the groove to go. So you want it to go around these outside edges and uh, it will do a tangent propagation for you if you have that set up. Um, and so that's what this selection of edges is all about. And then down here, you just tell it what dimensions you want to use, like how how much of the thickness. So we had a 0.1 thickness, so I've got a 0.04 uh, groove depth or width or whatever you want to call it, and then a 0.2 height. Um, and I can tell it to show the preview so that I know if it's going to work or not. And uh, uh, you might not be able to see that. It's off the screen. Okay, so once I've got that set up, then I just say OK. And that creates the groove that goes all the way around. Now, uh, you wanted this to curve down. And that, that's not something you can do automatically. So what I did was I made a surface. I just extruded a surface feature. So you go into your surfaces uh, command manager and you use the extruded surface. And I just used this 
I used a part of your existing sketch, that one line that's actually over here, and uh, and I I made a surface feature, and I I just turned it yellow and made it transparent, so I remember that it's just a surface. Okay, and uh, then I uh, I need to use a little trick here because. Your your original sketch only went up to there, but I needed this to go up to this face, so I used the uh, extend surface. Okay, it's a little bit of a trick, but uh, it works. And then I used a sketch on the top, and I extruded up to that surface. Notice I didn't say any kind of offset or anything. I put the surface where I wanted it to cut. Other ways I could have done this, and one of them would have been instead of using a uh, instead of using a cut up to surface, I could have used a replace surface. But but this doesn't really have a good place to uh, to end that. So I, I'd need to put in an artificial edge in here somewhere. Um, so that that really didn't work out. I could have could have cut it with the surface, but that would have involved even more work. So I just used this uh, sketch and cut cut that sketch up to the, the extruded surface that I created. All right, so I can turn off turn off this surface just to get it out of the view, and so that that creates that creates the shape that you were looking for. And up here, just there's nothing funky about this. It's maybe a little bit non-tangent. There's nothing really bad about it. I keep throwing all this stuff at you, and it's maybe a little more advanced than you need, but. Um, that's how you you can create what you're trying to get at here eventually in what did i use five uh, six features and uh, two sketches so um that's not too bad uh you you had the same number of of features more sketches and uh and you still weren't getting where you needed to go let me show what one of the mistakes that you had made. First of all, I've got your model in here right alongside mine. And you can see that SolidWorks sees this as a separate body from that. And the reason for that is, and I'll just turn these both on, is that I can take this one and make that a separate color because it's a separate body it's not it, it's like a different volume because there's no way for it to be joined together at this edge i mean if you were to make this edge you'd be able to see daylight through there right so when you created this feature it gave you an error and you just turned off the merge uh, the merge result button, or it, it automatically ignores this, I guess, because because when we click on this, it should give us a zero thickness error. It's not giving us that error. But in any case, these are two separate bodies because of zero thickness. Um, and you'd have to create another feature down here, probably from the same sketch that you used here. Okay, and then you could say, take that and extrude that up to this bottom face, and then tell it to uh, merge the result. And uh, under Feature Scope, Auto Select. So it's going to select everything and merge all these into a single body. Okay, so now if we go back up here, now we've got your uh, your model, which is now a single a single body, and my model, and they should look exactly the same, except 
uh, oh, yours is thicker on the bottom. Okay, so here's how to address that thicker on the bottom uh, issue. I'll go back to my uh, shell feature and multi-thickness settings. I'll, I'll click on this face and make this a 0.2 thickness and I'll say okay now I don't I didn't measure yours I don't know what it what it was but uh, so now all the vertical all the other faces are 0.1 and this bottom face is 0.2 okay that's way more information than you asked for but uh, this is this is why you, you need to learn a certain way of doing things and once you get kind of in that groove uh, everything else will just fall into place a lot easier.